The first item is knowing the store's layout. You know, a lot of people don't do this. You need to do a walkthrough of the store. You need to physically go there, understand the retailer before you even pitch them in person. So the biggest thing is to do a walkthrough, go to the store, speak to the employees, speak to the general manager if possible, and really understand the retail layout. You know, you should measure the shelf space on where you're going to be sitting, and you also want to think about where you might also be shelved. You know, if you have a snack product, it's not necessarily always the best fit by the checkout counter. You should look at maybe the coffee area if it's a grab and go kind of retailer. Or if they offer free coffee, you know, if you have a snack product that goes with coffee, put it by the coffee pot. So think about other places to put your product in the store. If you have a SKU variety, measure the shelf space and know what kind of shelf space your product needs to fit in. But knowing how many products that they typically bring on from each variety is very important. Also, do they have floor displays? How are they displaying the products in the stores? What are their different opportunities that you might have to merchandise your product in that retailer? Do they have clip strip programs? Can you put it hanging off of the shelf? You know, do they allow in-store marketing materials? All this information is very important when putting together a presentation for the retailer because if you walk in and they say, we're not interested in that at the moment, to have the variety of where else it can be shelved in the store and to have the wherewithal that you know what kind of products they're looking for is going to be incredibly important during that integral moment in that meeting because chances are you're not going to get the second chance. A lot of the times the general managers have a lot more power than they let on to or they admit to. They may have the opportunity to bring in local products without having corporate approval and they also may be able to bring in products on consignment without having that approved by corporate as well. So before you really go up the corporate ladder and run to the you know, approval process, you may want to speak to the general manager about you know, who is distributing. You know, where do they have the ability to place small quantities of product for testing? Do they offer in-store demos or tastings if you have a food product? What kind of program can you operate and what's been most successful in their experience? Because having that when going into a presentation is going to be a very powerful tool. We covered if your product's going to fit in the store, whether it's going to be merchandised there and what's going to work. We also covered speaking to the employees and the manager to find out how to bring the product into the store and what's going to be most successful. But do you know about who visits the store? What kind of customers they have? What's the demographics where they see it going? Because when you're speaking to a buyer, they're not only interested in the now opportunity, they're also interested in finding something that's going to be a good long-term fit and hopefully expand on your SKUs and you know be able to be a great selling product for years to come. So knowing where their demographics are skewing, if they're getting a younger demographic or if they're getting older demographics coming into the store is going to be very important. You, know, you can do that through a lot of industry magazines. You can also call the corporate office and find out if they have an advertising program or anything like that because if they have an advertising program, they probably have a sell sheet which includes their demographics. But you know there are polls available from a lot of private consulting groups and you can find a lot of that online through Google. So do your research online ahead of time. Also check with your small business administration office in your local area. They have a lot of free resources that they can use that are paid you know, for them, but free to you that are really expensive. So using those local resources to try to find the best information so you can go in with absolutely solid evidence that your product is going to be a slam dunk and take away all of their doubt. That's going to be a great key to success when having that initial meeting. The last item is should you accept no? You know, when, whenever you speak to a sales coach they say ne never accept no as an answer but no is a fine answer. Maybe and think it over are not okay answers. Whether you get a yes or a no, you should be prepared 
for the next steps. You should know going into that meeting what the outcomes should be and what the next steps should be on your side. So be prepared for a no. And if you do get a no, understand why, because it's probably not you, it's them. Be prepared to leave with a game plan. So if you're pitching to the retailer and they're saying, it's not a good fit for us now, we have already very similar SKUs, you can expand on that conversation to find out where they see the opportunity and why maybe in the future those brands are not the best fit if it's a natural retailer and the products get purchased by a large manufacturer they may not want to keep that on the shelf so knowing that ahead of time may bring you opportunity in the future and you can put out a google alert so you know what's going on and you know you can revisit with that buyer or the buyer in that position at the time when that happens so if you leave leave with a game plan and then plan to revisit with them when X happens. Or if you want, you can follow up and say, would it be all right if I check in with you next year and see if it's a better fit then? So more likely or not, they're usually gonna say yes. If not, that's okay as well. No is an acceptable answer. Think it over is not.